This is the Night Force Action Report from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, October 15th, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, joined tonight by Ethan Moses. Hey, Justin. How are you, man? I'm How are you? I'm swell. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm Excellent. I'm drinking some tea. I'm happy to be with my friends here and the friends on chat and the friends in space that we all have. The astronauts. Uh, Bring um, NASA back. America, who are you talking get to? back in charge. What there's, if Armageddon happens? There's no one to respond to you. Talking directly to the Stop NSA. being assholes. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got Jason Thompson here. How's it going, Jason? Pretty good. How's it going? I think it's going okay. It's uh, It's been a while since we had you on the show. I believe yeah, you have a new been... addition to the family. Um, how's your computer what? doing? A new bundle oh. of joy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, like Ethan was very excited about, you know, being named a godfather. You can be the godfather of my computer. Uh, I, was, I was trying to do a godfather impression. But I think, <laughs> hey! Like, hey. Uh, fucking Henry Winkler, you know? <laughs> go, ahead, uh, go kick the jukebox and get it started up. No, we no, gotta... Thing, things, are, things are going good. Good. I, uh, I was thinking about you because my, uh, my computer started making funny noises in the last two weeks. I blame the pandas because I actually I actually noticed it during the World of Warcraft stream, but um, I got some sort of fan clicking. I I've got monitors going, trying to figure out if it's the graphics card or the processor, and then all I can think is like I just I just want a console again. This is bullshit. <laughs> what about some what about some dust? Did you check some for some dust? I, actually, I actually you know I had a, a nice quiet evening on Friday. I got the computer out, did some surgery, uncovered the whole thing. Got my like can of blow stuff, blower back, whatever <laughs> dust yeah. duster. No, that's it's called can of blow. Yeah. Can of blow. <laughs> and Woke up three hours later, pissed, had pissed my pants. Bl- yeah. All Blew the, the ceiling was all the furniture was on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I went to buy that at Best Buy and they had to check my ID. I was just I know, like, yeah. I just kind of looked at her. I was like, oh, whatever, what kids? I'm surprised they checked at Best Buy. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and then the uh, the cashier proceeded to tell me a story about um, how her sister was supposed to go to a party where uh, people were using that, and she decided not to go. And later, those people got into a car wreck, and one of them died. And I was just like, I don't know what to do with this information in Best Buy. Uh, this is you this know, is too much. What happened to people not telling people stories because you are dealing with people that are like telling you stories or giving you looks like you can't go anywhere. Like what has happened to America where you, wherever where Justin lazy goes, someone tells him a story. Like, Hey, that guy looks like he needs a story. Let's tell him. <laughs> but Maybe she, they saved your life. She just like, because you know what's good. I mean, tell what, tell the rest of the story, Justin, because no. you were about to go to a party where people were doing the same thing. Go, and, <laughs> and that girl. And when you turned around to that girl to say, thank you, she wasn't there anymore. You know why? She was an angel. <laughs> did you, the did whole you time. It? Did you lock it away in the 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 trunk of your car so that you wouldn't huff it while you were driving? <laughs> uh, yeah. Apparently, yeah. She just. I think she was trying to give me ideas or something. But yeah, <laughs> did she keep winking at you? But I mean, but I'll she come, literally I'll went hang from. Out with you. She literally went from, and then one of them died. Have a nice day. Like at like that was the end of the conversation. You know, the God. end of my transaction. So I'm just like, thanks? I just, I, I don't know. How do you react to that? So, yeah. The internet's making people really socially awkward. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> well, that was the thing. I, I kept thinking, I was like, I, I don't, you know, I don't go into Best Buy all that often anymore. This just makes me want to buy more stuff on Amazon so I don't, I can avoid conversations like that. <laughs> Hey, but it's it's a twisted cycle though, because then you never leave because you don't have weird conversations with people. That's why I stay inside because one, I have they, people have weird conversations with me, and two, I don't understand what they're saying, and I feel like they're yelling at me. And German sounds really mean when people. Oh, yell at me. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so what else have you been up to, Jason? Well, I made some kick-ass chili last night. We'll go. I'll we'll be go, the judge of that. Goes in JPT's I'll kick-ass so. chili. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's getting pretty cold here, and so I just felt like getting in the mood for some chili. So uh, we just crafted that up last night. None of that, you know, Indiana bullshit macaroni chili crap. 
crap. Uh, it's actually called goulash, but whatever. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> What's in your chili? Break it down for us, Jason. Uh, well, I can't tell you everything. Mm, oh, yes, chili. I, I, I myself make a chili, and I'm not going to change my chili because of your chili. I use, I, I use uh, red beans, kidney beans. I use black beans for the first time. I usually use diced tomatoes as a decent base. Some tomato paste, just to give it a little something. Mm -hmm. And let's see, garlic, onion, red pepper... Uh, I think we had some green peppers in there too. So there's hmm. a pretty good chunk of uh, veggies and, uh, of course, uh, ground beef also thrown mm -hmm. in there. So hmm. I usually put mustard in it, but my wife didn't want me to do that this time. So um, we kind of stayed away from that. Hmm. Hmm. She enjoyed that it sounds... more. So, you yeah. know, it's pretty basic, but it's just all dependent on uh, ratios, I think. There's a, a right answer to this. What is the uh, complimentary food to go with chili? Baked potatoes. Usually peanut butter. Peanut potatoes? Peanut what? <laughs> <laughs> Grilled cheese, motherfuckers. Everyone knows that. No, that's have like, you ever if you have like had a tomato based peanut butter? That's good. Uh, yeah, that okay, I'm, I'm deadly. I'm with you on that. Oh no. I don't know. I prefer my chili. I go to um go to steak and shake, pick up some chili, go to Wendy's, pick up some chili. Go to Skyline, pick up some chili. Just come back, put it all in one pot. That's how I do. It. <laughs> and then yeah, but you're mixing. And then sit on the toilet. <laughs> you're crossing streams, buddy. You're crossing <laughs> streams. Yeah, and again, yeah, that's gonna. There's only one place you'll end up there. How is Skyline? I haven't had Skyline for a really long time. It's been a long. I mean, is it still good or is it? Yeah, has has it has it ever been good? Like no. Yes, I I like it and I go there a lot, but I'm not really convinced that it's good chili. It's just like. I don't know. I like I like the mounds of cheese myself, and the sometimes they'll give you a little, little the cheese in baggies to take home with you. I think that's kind of cool. oh wow, that's that's delightful. Yeah, was it what is it the chili five way? Is that what you go with chili five way? I get a that sounds <laughs> I, so dirty. I, I, <laughs> is it, it is. It's like it's kind of like a Cleveland steamer, but you know, right. <laughs> with more chili. <laughs> I usually go the four way because I don't want those onions. <laughs> onions always mess up a good five way. You, you don't want to tear up. You don't want to tear up during a five way. Absolutely. No crying. No crying during the <laughs> during yeah. the five way. Five, five girls, one chili. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> but actually, yeah, I get, oh, I get the three way potato. That's my that's my go to. Wait, it's a chili. It's a potato with chili inside of it, like a baked potato. With just, chili. You just make your chili. You got your baked potato. Just put that chili on top of your baked potato. It's Are you fucking kidding me? It's That's amazing. Awesome. I like this. Yeah. Man, lots changed. Lots changed. <laughs> it's just, you know, we have no government and we have chili on our baked potatoes. That's <laughs> chili on baked potatoes. <laughs> no one's here to tell us days. we can't do that anymore. It's like a dystopian future. This is awesome, except for the chili on potato thing. That's cool. <laughs> that sounds really good. Ethan, what have you been up to? Uh, I went to a DJ show. Like like a real DJ show. A DJ show that... Like DJs walking down the to, aisle, like, showing like, off? Just DJs just on a big stage. DJ like, Tanner cosplay. Uh, oh, I wish. There was a girl that looked kind of like DJ Tanner, but then she turned around and she was actually a dude. With a real big beard. It was cool, though. <laughs> but no. Um, Terrible. DJ show, and I actually... I actually uh, had to wake up at what, what time did I leave? So I, I, I took a nap at 8 p.m. I woke up at about 9. I went and met some of my friends out for some beers at like 11 beforehand and then the show didn't begin until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, that's that's a thing. That's what people do. That's like the nightlife in Berlin. It's like, ah, we love the night. They love the night here. I don't know. It's like some weird vampire shit. And speaking of weird vampire shit, it was exactly like in Blade. <laughs> Remember the scene in Blade where he's in the oh, club yeah. the blood and bath. everything looks good? Oh, my gosh. And the whole time, like, because everyone's real close. And I don't really like to be really close to people, um, especially when I kind of have the uh, impression that maybe they might be vampires. And I am not equipped to fight vampires at that point, nor am I ever in my life usually. Um, and the whole time, like, my friends were like, how do you feel about it? I was like... Ah, it's just like Blade. They were like, wait, what? That's what you're taking from us? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're taking from us. You're like a meat locker? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I, you, when you walk into this club, the, the meat locker, the, the floor opens up and there's an elevator and you write it down. But No, 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 but it was an old abandoned factory. Like it's, 
It's just like how they, it is in movies. Like, I don't know. I've, I've been exposed to a lot of was movies. Was Chris Christopherson Chris there? DJ Chris uh, No, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Only one yeah. hand. <laughs> Yeah, people. Very few people know that Chris Christopherson, in, in addition to his country career, also DJs in the. Uh, they're like big proponent for the Berlin nightlife. So, but it was fun. I actually had a I had a really good time. Uh, every, I was so I, uh, you know I don't ever know what to wear in these kind of situations, and so I usually put on a hoodie and jeans and whatnot. And everyone at this club had a hoodie and jeans on and a V-neck T-shirt. I was like, Why wear the uniform? These are my people. Yeah, I know. That's exactly what it was. I was like, oh, yeah, but they're not my people because I don't – I could understand what they were really doing the whole time. I mean, people sway. You can't dance because you can't move. People just sway back and forth, and uh, it was fun. It was a real, real, real good experience. I liked it. I'm pretty Thumbs sure that, that song from Blade was my favorite electronic song not on the Hackers soundtrack for at least like five or six years because – Was that – was it Darude? No. That's no. Sandstorm. I don't know who yeah. did Sandstorm. It. That's right. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good song. A good scene. Yeah, fucking Blade. Go watch Blade. Have you, has everyone seen Blade? Is Blade one. Hold I don't know up? if anyone can answer in the. Oh yeah. I I I bet at this point I'd like Blade two better. I think I would. Blade two was pretty awesome. Blade three, eh. Blade two was cool. The Guillermo, like the Guillermo del Toro factor might like have some nostalgia for me at this point. I didn't like Blade two at the time. I thought it was too much of a departure from. Uh, the first the, one, but we can agree last... the third one sucked. Yeah, the third yeah, one was yeah. awful. Didn't understand the special it. effects. Yeah. The especially the, the last fifteen minutes aren't very good, but <laughs> I think the story and like you know the opening scene is is pretty top notch. So yeah. I haven't. It's been a. I only saw Blade Two once, so maybe I need to revisit. Yeah, I think we should all watch that. I you know what I, I just I haven't gotten my Halloween. You guys do a, like a like a month of October marathon of. Shitty horror movies, right? Oh, AMC started that on Sunday. Okay, okay. I need to get into that. I think I'm gonna put Blade up there, Blade Two at least, because I need to get get back into that. I, I need Blade Two, and then oh, what is it? I need to find a copy of Troll Two. And if anyone can help me, please help me, because I watched a documentary about Troll Two, and I'm like, I, I need to see that movie just because everyone's like raves about it. So how does the internet ha- not taking care of you in that situation? Right. Uh, I could. It was on Netflix. And I haven't put any effort into it. <laughs> that's it. That's entirely what it is. So, so yeah. I've been um, blowing through the killing on Netflix. Do either of you watch that show? I watched it all the way through. All, oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm Aubrey like does. Half, I don't know. halfway through the second season. I talked a little bit about it on a podcast last week, but I, what fascinates me about the show is. I really just I don't like any of the people on the show. I think the cops are just terrible cops, and like especially the main one, uh, the girl, uh, Lieutenant Linden or um, Detective yeah, Linden. She, uh, I, she's so awkward, and she just makes things worse. And uh, but I cannot tear myself away. Like it took three or four episodes to get into it, but uh, both me and my fiance have really falling hard for that show and it takes an interesting turn in the second season so curious to see where it goes from here yeah Hmm. well it's limited they canceled it so did they really Mm -hmm. awesome yeah Yeah. all right third season's the last so i thought they're which is i don't know how they could have kept carrying it on because the first two seasons no the the third season makes sense and it's it's pretty solid but then they uh they barely brought it back for a third season, yeah. and then it just tanked ratings wise. So then they um, just said, "We're done after I the know. third season." So I mean, I know a lot of people were frustrated at the end of the first season, and it didn't seem to have a lot of buzz around it to begin with. But Cole's been talking that show up, so I thought I'd give it a, a chance. And I thought I saw it was coming back for the fourth season. Had wrong the wrong information, so now I'm regretting investing all this time in a show that's not going anywhere. But I really like it, so maybe that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I like I like the premise for the third season and I enjoyed it for the most part but it's just not a show that a lot of people can get into my wife didn't really like it but I kept I kept up with it so but isn't it good that, that, that some shows don't last for eight seasons I mean yeah I think we need we all need a respite from all these seasons because like I haven't even watch any Breaking Bad at all. You know what I mean? So I just keep thinking of all these shows that are stacked a lot, up. A lot of these shows just... seem to have like a sweet spot around that fourth and fifth season and they just need to go out by that point. And, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, like some of them, I just, I don't know, I say that and I'm just laughing at the concept of 24 coming back really soon. It's just like, um, I don't know. They need to write, I don't, I don't know when you do that, but they need to write these shows with endings in mind and most of them seem to not really have that. And then, I don't know, they also get stuck being, some of them get stuck being popular, which is what I feel like happened to Breaking Bad and Sons of Anarchy and those types of shows that it's just like, uh, we gotta keep going cause, you know... This is big, but uh, we really needed to end it. Like super, I think Supernatural is the worst offender at that because they had a really tight four to five yeah. season mm-hmm. storyline, and then it's just like, ah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. and that's the other thing about the show. This I watched the season premiere last night because it was uh, on my TiVo. How many hospital visits are these guys going to spend <laughs> with Sam and Dean? Yeah, like they Dude, are they on Obamacare? What's the I was gonna say they've each been did they did they sign up in time? I mean I think they've each been killed at least I gonna, twice. I wonder what the kill count is at this point. <laughs> I think it's two two. Oh. I'm, I'm trying to think. I no, there was one no no wait a minute. There was one where Dean almost died, but then he was brought back by like a like a fake uh, pre or preacher in the South. I do remember that. But I don't know if that's counted as a death. He was on his deathbed. He got electrocuted. I'm just, I'm over it. I, I could, uh, the, the, the funny thing is, is about last season, I got about halfway through and about 10 episodes stacked up, and I was like, I'm not going to watch these. And I watched the last 15 minutes of the very last episode of last season, and I was like, I didn't miss anything. Yep. Yeah. Which is kind of a good thing about the show, because like I, I was getting really stressed out about it, and it was taking up space, and I thought, no, I'm just going to liquidate and watch the last episode. I wish and... when I go to Netflix for Supernatural, I wish they would give me like, two ways to watch the show is like here are the monster of the week episodes right. here are yeah. the storyline episodes because I, I would mm-hmm. just hang out in monster of the week shit like even cut off yeah. the like you know the the beginning and end where they're tying it in the matrix the overall story and just give me the monsters because that's that's why i keep watching the show but and that, because yeah I'd be, I'd be silly to stop now so <laughs> that's a that's a series that could definitely benefit from mick g not being involved with it anymore yeah. <laughs> i will that say guy out. I will say though they the the special effects for that particular TV show or really any TV show in general are pretty awesome. Yeah. Like they they beat Walking Dead to a T. Especially like there's there's a lot of beheadings in the last couple of seasons mm-hmm. and whoever does that for WB or whoever Needs to go over to AMC and take care of business. The, yeah. the beheading guy. Hey. Yeah. Hey Roger, could you get over to AMC? They're, they're gonna. They're, they're, but they're straight slackers. up, like I mean, that that is a praise for the show. They they have some really really good special effects for a you know a weekly show. Yeah. Yeah. And it's they sell it. Monsters. Are they? Have they? I haven't. I think I haven't watched past the sixth season. Have they brought monsters back? Because there for a while it was yeah. just people filled with black dust. Yeah. That they, was that was. Yeah, there are still monsters. Not not as many, but yeah, there's still some. Yeah. In there. yeah. I mean, they have to fill out those 24 episode seasons somehow. Yeah. Or Twenty episodes. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I still find myself enjoying it. So what? It's it's dumb at this point, but I I still love it. I do, but it's just it's annoying whenever they spend half the episode when you know they're not going to kill the character. They're they're just not. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're not, yeah. Like, you know this that somehow it. they're going to live. I don't know. They might. They might. I love Sam and Dean though. Yeah. I mean, it's about time. Yeah. It's about time we had those guys. We needed those guys. <laughs> Everyone needed those guys in their lives. Absolutely. The characters TV deserved. Yeah, he was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Do not look at chat. Yeah, Don't look right. at chat. No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. Oh, oh God <laughs> damn it. Video games. God <laughs> yeah. damn it. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm refreshing chat right now because do I kind of want to look at it. <laughs> okay. Oh man. All right. I'm, I'm ex- glad I caught up. Yeah. <sighs> I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, let's talk. <laughs> because this is what this is this is March or February. Yeah. I don't remember when this game came out, but I'm really excited to talk about Tomb Raider right now. So I'm jumping in uh, because Ethan, you need to play this fucking game. Okay. Yeah. Why not? So you don't have to yell at me. No. <laughs> Uh, anybody that maybe you do witnessed uh, my stream on Saturday, this game about halfway through just like embraces the fact that this is just an action game, and I finally got over the fact that this isn't you know your typical Tomb Raider exploration game. Like it's got some of those adventure bits that I like, but you know I'd prefer more. But playing it as just a pure action game, all of a sudden I start to have just 
the time of my life. It was just, it, it turns out to be super fun. You know, Laura kind of comes in, Lara, Laura, come, kind of yeah. comes into her own. And there are just, there are just some good, pure action movie moments that I, I think are going to uh, knock you out of your chair there, Ethan. Like, like right out? Yeah, right out. Like, I was... Knock me out of my socks. Jump, hmm. um, we'll see. If my desk had allowed, I would have jumped out of my seat and cheered, just because it came out of nowhere, but I was just like... 100% behind the character reminded me some of some of your Resident Evil 6 clips of just like good boss moments yeah. and just like just cheering on what you're seeing no matter how ridiculous it is um that's awesome I'm into that I'm it, okay with that it's uh it's you know I, I'm glad I went back to it I just kind of I kind of sat down this weekend um after I got uh kind of into the gaming mood and just like we're getting to the end of the year I have to finish some of these games and the three mm-hmm. big ones for me are Tomb Raider, uh, Bioshock Infinite, and uh, The Last of Us before mm-hmm. anything else comes out. By the way, thanks to Ubisoft for delaying Watch Dogs so I can put that off my list. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> um, and, and Tomb Raider just seemed like the easiest one to knock out, so I'm going to uh, keep playing that uh, this week. But I would imagine I'm probably two-thirds of the way through the game. It's 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 kind of beefy, but... um. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's still a really great looking game. Lots of polish. It just kind of surprised me how much fun I ended up having with it. Cause I thought it was kind of a, a known commodity, but just, I don't know the the progression that you have with upgrading your weapons and, um, there's, there's always something new to do in the, in, in the action or something new to play with, which uh, I think is done really well. And I don't know, like I've been fighting, enjoying this game as an action game. And now I just kind of let go in that last session and, um, there's just some really ridiculous moments, uh, mostly keying off the fact that um, one of the major puzzle elements um, has to do with basically setting setting gas on fire with your fire, fire arrows, and just the world just explodes for about 45 minutes straight, and it's really fun. I did not expect this game to be this fun. Hmm, good. Yeah, now I want to check it out. Yeah. Definitely do. I think that it, it's it's good that that worked because I think a lot of people kind of, and me included, didn't think that one that it was necessary to reboot Tomb Raider, especially with Uncharted uh-huh. basically taking over where Tomb Raider left off. But two, just seeing it as kind of like, oh, this is a cash grab. Like I thought it was just gonna be a cash grab, but it, it was nice to see that um, they they came through and it was it was a really really good game so um, that's that's awesome I and I'm glad that you had a lot of fun with it too because it's one thing if a lot of critics have fun with it but like for someone who like you and I uh, who play a lot of different games and don't always finish those you actually finishing that game says a lot about it too because it's gonna well, keep yeah. you you know, entertain you know? I haven't had a good track record this year and I'm not quite done yet so we'll hold our hold our breath there <laughs> but uh, 75 percent complete. For you is complete. <laughs> <laughs> it counts. You know, it still counts. Yeah, you know, it counts. Absolutely counts. No, I definitely think I got what I wanted out of it. As far as, yeah, um, I'm just glad I, I, as I did, I expected it to feel really kind of mundane compared to Uncharted. And it, you know, it definitely borrows heavily from that game, like to the point where. When you even when you're playing some of those like really linear action sequences that just look like great set pieces, it's a little bit more mm-hmm. awkward than Uncharted because they've yeah. the, you know they've done it three times. Uh, but it's still it's still fantastic, and um, I'm just glad I finally got over the fact. Um, for anybody out there that watches Californication, once I figured out who the voice act actress was uh, for Lara, I. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, after seeing her debaucherous behavior in Californication, it, it kind of changed my tone on the character for a bit. But I finally gotten over that. So she uh, she's also in Grey's Anatomy as well. Really? Does she have her mm-hmm. accent? No, she is no. is. I didn't realize she was English until um, I watched the making of of that and realized that oh, she just does a really good American accent. So really good American accent. Grey's Anatomy. Making of Tomb Raider. Uh, oh. her, she did an interview on it. Yeah, no, no, I, no, I haven't. <laughs> trust me. I, I, yeah. No, but uh, yeah, but no, it was really interesting. It was really interesting because she, I mean, for that character, like if they're going to bring her back, I mean, she seems. I mean, she's not like an A-list actress, but she's not unknown, you know, mm. by any means. So, 
Um, I, I just, I mean, what do you think they do from here with this? Do you think they're coming back with a, are they doing another Terminator game? No, no, I've been talking or? to some of the guys that have finished the game. And so, I mean, this whole game is about establishing, you know, Laura as a badass and that she can, you mm-hmm. know, she can survive this shit. She, she, she can handle it. So I don't, I can't really see them going in the sequel, I, I know they're continuing the series. I can't see them going in the sequel of another game just beating the hell out of her like they are in this one. I mean, because I mean, yeah. it, it wears on you. So hopefully they get back to more of the exploration style. But at the same time, y- you know, you can tell they enjoy the action stuff. So yeah, it would be kind of weird if they did depart from that. But I kind of hope they do. So I don't know. I expect more action. Hopefully. The action can be contained in more like Indiana Jones style or actual like actually tomb adventures more so than a lot of mm-hmm. the stuff is um, outdoors on the island and not really in the tombs. The tombs are so small, um, yeah. and they have. I mean, the the puzzles are great. They're just really they're just really small. But you know, after I got over the fact that you know I sort of have more fun with exploding things than solving things and just kind of let myself go, mm-hmm. and it's been a good time. So yeah, cool. Uh, Jason, give us give us a Minecraft update here. Well, things are going pretty good, server wise. Seems like everyone's getting along and expanding and limiting themselves from encroaching on others' spaces and um, <laughs> no no territory like, fights. Yeah, not yet. That I know of. I'm Street waiting gangs. for someone to come from underneath or something and encroach on somebody else's spot. Push uh, I am, I am, penis I am, tower out of the way. I am building a sky bridge though, to connect the world, and uh, <clears throat> you know I've, I've bought some some leases from some uh, tribes people and have been you know mowing down some some forests and that kind of stuff. So that is I, that is happening. I, I'm just saying you may not be able to stop it. That is a great community no project. To Bring it. everybody together. I hope you see that through. <laughs> but no, things wild. things are going good. I actually recorded a, an episode today that was a pretty decent one kind of revealing what I've been doing and have plans for. So that should be coming tomorrow afternoon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and having the ability to sort of record and then export and publish same day as long as YouTube doesn't sort of review my videos for monetization. You always make me nervous. Like, you'll post on Twitter. um, Like, I'm uploading the the latest episode, and and so I kind of think... That there's something going on with you with YouTube that day, and I'm usually I'm yeah. I'm also working on something, and I'm just like, man, if YouTube is just fucking behind schedule again, like it was really frustrating frustrating me the other. Uh, I think yeah, last for last week's Night Force, I don't even think I could get that get that show up yeah. in 24 hours. Well, um, I can say I just I'm just looking, and it's it's good to go for tomorrow. So I think as you know, as long as I get it within a 20 hour window. It's mm-hmm. plenty of time for it to figure itself out, and it seems like it's been sort of uh, reviewing and and granting them a lot faster. But yeah, when it's when it doesn't work, it's like man, like why even show people this? Because it's going to be all jacked up until they get it figured out. But, so, yeah. so Ethan's working on the sky bridge. What are you working on, Jason? Uh, like I said, I just uh, I just kind of revealed my plans for um, what I'm doing on my house. I don't know if it's really even a house anymore. I like to call it an ultra globe. In ultra half. globe. Uh, <laughs> that's what it looks like. It's cool. kind of awesome. Is yeah, there a word awesome. for a globe in half? Uh, I mean, it's like a like a cylinder, but like a thin cylinder. It it's looks like, like a wedge. Globe. Like a wedge. Okay, there's a, a wedge. Ultra, yeah, wedge. ultra wedge. Ultra wedge. <laughs> ultra wedge sounds awful. Though. Ultra wedge. Prepare for the ultra wedge. Oh. Was that a, that's what a nerd gives another nerd. Yeah. <laughs> hemisphere. Wow. Yeah, there are actual words for that. But thank you. <laughs> oh yeah. Shit. Yeah. Hemisphere. That does actually does sound right. <laughs> We're overthinking this, and we sound dumber. Yeah. And and don't worry, Jordan will be paid very soon. There, there's, there's reasons there... for things going down. Wait, are there like mercenaries uh, for hire on the server now? Not yet, but I feel like there might be pretty soon. So how many? About how many active people do we have on the? Or how many? I guess six, or right. seven. Yeah, I was. I was gonna say uh, actually, yeah, six or seven. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's fun. It, it's yeah. it's good. Well, we, we've got a lot. It, it's uh, 
I wish that we would have – actually, you guys have a lot of – you know, between you and Andy, and I've got a couple, a little bit of video too, it would be cool to put together a, um, a video of – like everything, like rising up, you know, like, yeah. like kind of a kind of a uh, uh, what is it called? A time lapse of that, because we did a lot of work really quick, um, and then some of us got distracted, but then we did more stuff. So <laughs> it's it's pretty awesome. Look, I'm pretty proud of our server actually. I'm I'm really proud of it. We had our little hiccup early on where we got yeah. you know attacked. Hacked. We got well, I I call it hacked, but it's more like I didn't put a password on there. Or I didn't whitelist it. So <laughs> so you said you know. Jokingly, that people are you're going to start encroaching on each other's territory. Is would you say that this might be the peak for the server and like basically it's downhill from here for like I don't know sociological issues and 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 things getting uh, destroyed? No. Okay. Mm-mm. I th- I think everyone is is still within good spirits with each other and you know the the initial goal was to really keep everybody close so that we could sort of interact with each other and I think we've all done a fairly good job at doing that. Um, and then at some point, you know, maybe when like 1.7 gets released, maybe doing some exploring together, that kind of thing. Because, you know, what I'm working on is going to be taking me a little while. And then at some point I do want to sort of get out there and see what else is, is going on. So I think there just needs to be a little bit more interacting, and a little bit more. Um, sorry, I'm watching chat right now. Um, a little bit more interaction and maybe a, a few sort of... Uh, live streams together i think that will yeah kind of keep things going for a while but yeah every, everyone is you know got their foot in the in the water and i think it's just time that we uh kind of put both feet in and see where that goes mm-hmm. cool you play anything else yeah I've, I've been playing spelunky uh for a while i wasn't streaming my my daily challenges just to see if i played better when i wasn't interacting with chat and i will say Yes, to a certain extent, <laughs> but then no at the same time. <laughs> Better qualified by Spelunky, like yeah, because Spelunky sometimes it doesn't and, matter. Okay, okay, and this is one thing that I keep mentioning, and I don't know if I've mentioned it in an actual live stream. I wish that when you play the daily challenge, they would allow you to go back and play it without it qualifying for a score, just to see the rest of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Just to see, like, get to continue on, like, continue off so from need, where you died. You want the architect from Rogue Legacy in Spelunky so you could freeze mm. freeze a layout and give it another shot. Even if it's not, I would say, even if it's not a daily challenge. Ex- yeah, exactly. But, you know, just so that you're not, you know, so if you go out early, you're not just feeling like, oh, well, that was a waste of my time. You know, you can still continue on, but it's not going to count. For your score, mm-hmm. so, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I just, I, I get frustrated with that because I'm just like, man, I was like right there. What's the next level? Let me go play something else. It just, I don't know. It, I've come to the, to not hating it so much, which is, which you know, I'm getting to the point where <laughs> like, ah, oh, I died. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good feeling. Like, yeah. like, oh, I died. I guess I'll start another game. You know, it's just like it, I'm getting that grindiness to it in a good way. Mm. So, is anybody better than Aaron yet? I don't think so. He's kind no. of untouched. He ruined daily challenges for me. I, I, mean, he, he... I thought I was gonna get, like I, I when I did a challenge video last week. I thought I was gonna get back into the game, but I can't. I can't do it on a daily basis right now. I'm. I will mm-hmm. randomly bring back, probably like at a week at a time. I'll revisit Spelunky, but right now it's not a, it's not yeah. a focus. But I did see something kind of cool. Uh, pop up today. Do you guys know anything about Salty Bet? No. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's like the Twitch channel that I forget which fighting game it uses, but it just basically pairs up uh, just really random ass characters and people place uh, fi- like fictional bets on who they think is going to win and all watch the live stream. Really, really popular. But I guess there's a new one. Uh, a Spelunky roulette is out there where basically it's going to play through Spelunky and you have you you pick which way you think the person's going to die and place a bet on like mm. you know if the spikes get them or 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 whatnot which i think is actually a really novel way cuz that's kind of how i watch those is i'm not watching you to do well i'm watching to see how you die cuz yeah that's the most yeah, entertaining that's, part about spelunky 
Man, I know, but you know, don't you wish? I wish. Maybe this is why I don't stream it as much. Is I wish people cheered for me, but they just want me to die. Mm-hmm. Like, that seems kind of a uh, feels like the Hunger Games a little bit, you know? So, uh, it's like you're all so, District One, and yeah. I'm I'm the poor, poor, you know, young young lady from District Twelve, and uh, I'm just doing my best. And then I just got <laughs> fell on some spikes. Sometimes to just appease people, I die in a rapid succession. Do you don't you know what Jason? Hey Jason, just between I me got, and you, shh, don't no, don't let anybody don't you kill yourself to appease anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you do it because someone needs to fucking beat Aaron because I can't believe that he beat the game on a daily challenge at one point. That, yeah. That's ridiculous. I I hate that. I hate I hate I hate him. Actually, I love him. He's a nice guy. He's a great guy. Just real good at spelling key. You know what? So uh, the other thing that I re- I found was, you know, at the very bottom of the play screen, there's deathmatch. Have you ever done that? No, I, ha- I haven't local. been able to get it to work. It's local only. Is it's it? Local oh, only. Okay. Yeah. But it's it's crazy. Like matches it- last ten seconds sometimes. <laughs> oh, I can't. Im- yeah, I can't imagine it would be. Uh, it's yeah, last it's pure shotgun. Ins- yeah, it's pure insanity. If if that could be multiplayer and streamed, man. Man, well, it would yeah, be. I was kind of pissed it reminds me of Bomberman a lot. I think they can play that. I don't know if it's online, but you can play it on the Vita versus other Vita players. And uh, oh, the Vita, right? But I'm just kind of like, why? Why can't I do that on my other version? So yeah. It Have you ever fun. played all three versions that you own, Justin, at the same time? <laughs> at the same time, that'd be hard to do. I guess I got what I, uh, with that. Maybe I could rig the controls of the Vita to play with my mouth, and then I could maybe pull it pull it off. But yeah, I don't cool. have enough appendages to do that. I just want to see you put your Vita in your mouth. Period. So just go ahead and do that. <laughs> you just I scream do, that. I mean, it's a, it's a sexy screen, but I don't want to ruin that sexy screen. Oh, uh, I guarantee you'll get a thousand viewers that that day. Like, God, guy with Vita in mouth. <laughs> People love that shit. <laughs> Or dot com. Yeah, we get hard, 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 and put the See, dumbest shit available. Up. Actually, that's kind of like our uh, our motherfucking headlines uh, idea that never went anywhere. Our um, but or, I, but or or I, celebrity tit list. Celebrity tit. Yeah, you still own that though. Still own that. Yeah, Vita, I don't know what to do with it. Vita in mouth and World of Warcraft uh, <laughs> and Minecraft. I will say I will say that I am experimenting with doing sort of a daily challenge montage like you've been doing Justin, so your your editing um, has inspired me. I uh, yeah, it was m- more out of laziness cuz I could not see cutting a daily video from that and doing our highlights. Uh, but uh, I I, I like looking back over like a, a week at a time and just seeing yeah. man I didn't learn shit <laughs> you'd think I'd be getting yeah. better and uh yeah. the the last I, the last video I put together for the first time though it did have an entire daily challenge run in it because I only lived for 70 seconds yeah that day when we both got 2500 points cause we both shh <laughs> it's it it horrible uh, it, any other games you wanna talk about Jason uh, I'm thinking about jumping back into Fallout New Vegas now that I can Man, actually stacking. run that and and do it. So I played it on the Xbox many moons ago when it came out, right when it came out. So uh, I enjoy it. It's probably my favorite Fallout game. I've mentioned that before. So I think I'm probably going to maybe LP that one. I'm not sure. That could be fun. I, um, That's a good game for I that. I want to test the waters at first, maybe just try to kind of grind on the main story because... Fallout's one of those games where I just I'm like, oh look the pretty everything's, mm-hmm. and you know I didn't really pay too much attention to uh, the story. So I, I do need another LP for my channel. So I think that's the direction I'm going to try to go. Um, and so if you see those pop up, that means I'm enjoying myself. Well, so you know I, I don't mind going back a little bit into the older games, but I do have some other things in mind. I mean I'm going to continue obviously Minecraft. But uh, I think just solo single player stuff. I, I may head that direction. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got I got sucked back into New Vegas pretty easily. I mean, I put yeah, probably about thirty hours into it. I was it worried a month ago. Yeah, yeah, I kind of was too a little bit. <laughs> there's there's three different endings, right? Oh no, oh, there's like, I mean, there's three main endings. 
I think red there's more. I, think, the I feel like there's five the green or six. ending. Because there's different, so you can win with all the different factions, which are three factions you can win with, and then there's also the anarchy, and then the like. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of. Okay, I, there's, I, maybe there's I was just thinking of factions. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Faction wise, yeah, but you can fuck everybody over. <laughs> okay. I mean, like one of the Indians I really liked was that you could just. Uh, this isn't spoilers now because New Vegas has been out for a while. Uh, right. Unless someone wants to get mad, and you can refresh chat. I want to get mad. I'm gonna put you uh, on mute. Can't get mad. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, one of them you just fuck everybody over, and you just you're the king. Oh, gotcha. Or something like that. So I was excited. That is not the one I went with the first time around. So yeah, yeah. I was excited so. until you said over. Yeah. Um, that actually reminds me. I jumped back into Skyrim this weekend. I have been putting. It's winter time now. That's winter <laughs> it's time. It's good. It's good Skyrim time. But uh, yep, yep. I, I've been putting it off because I think the last time I played, I had finished the Dark Brotherhood quests, uh, so I finished a faction, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So that like daunting choice prevented me from ever like getting excited about playing the game. And then, um, mm-hmm. then as soon as we kind of got into the stream. And I started hanging out with Lydia again. I remembered I really love this game. Like, it's really a lot of fun. Just, um, I decided to focus on doing um, some of the storyline quests. And I think, storyline-wise, I'm caught up to where I was when I quit on the 360, uh, which is nice. Mm. Um, but holy shit, uh, Shadow Mare, my horse, continues to be the star of the damn show. Because that... Yep. That horse will... That horse don't give a fuck. No, it doesn't. <laughs> It did, it didn't give a fuck if it can even fit in a doorway when it is go, nope. going off to. It is equal opportunity not giving a fuck. It's universal. <laughs> it doesn't give a fuck if it eats your food or if it kills a dragon for you. Like it's uh, it is just pits. Can he die? can he can Shadow Mare die? It, yeah, never, it comes back. Okay, I've it, never yeah. been able to yeah. kill it. If like, if it can finally. come, it's kind of too overpowered. It's almost like <laughs> it's, um, it's so awesome. You, you're kind of like. You're like Shadow Mare. No, I no, I got no, I got this. Let me fucking kill something for once, or you'll be sneaking, and then you'll hear this. It's <laughs> my best horse impression. It just comes <laughs> dashing out there. I will say though, I will say it, it, in, in reference to Shadow Mare, there was a time that there was another horse that it, I think in my storyline in Skyrim, which I really heavily you know made up, um, <laughs> it falls in love with one of the horses at the house that I own, and that horse got killed by bandits. And let me fucking tell you, Shadow Mare was pissed. I bet he kicked bandits' faces like to the moon. It was like, I get so- I'll avenge you. I get so it's excited great. when Shadow Mare jumps in. It is. Uh... I know. <laughs> because, well, I mean, because I forget about it. Like you know, sometimes you 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 get into the dungeons and that sort of thing. And you're just you're away from Shadow Mare, and like you've got your sense of normalcy, which for me is um, me trying to snipe guys with my bow and then freaking out when I don't kill them in one hit and running away and hoping Lydia takes a swing at them. That's how I play mm-hmm. it right now. And, and now I'm learning. I'm trying to do. Um, um, like raise zombies a lot, so I'm trying to get a zombie version of like everything. Um, oh shit! And um, which is really silly when I basically have a tank companion, but we won't overanalyze that too much. Um, but yeah, I'll get I'll get used to that scenario of that's how my battles take place, and then I'll be just wandering around outside, and shit gets real, and that horse just comes comes in and like puts Lydia in her place. Like this is this is how you fight. This is how you get in there. Mm-hmm. And Lydia's a little, yeah. she's still a little, uh, you know, a little slow to jump into action, I would say. Mm. Um, and then I still want to clear up because chat keeps trying to get my character to hook up with Lydia. Um, I, just once and for all, this is a totally platonic business relationship that I have with Lydia. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for Lydia. Mm-hmm. I will never leave her side. We will always adventure together. But there are, there are, are no conflicting emotions whatsoever. Um, she does wander into my bedroom a little too often when I'm trying to sleep. Like I try to shut her out and she'll just open that door back up again. She's a little too close to my daughters. Um, but I, but I don't think I've been sending in her any mixed signals. Whoa. Season whoa, whoa, five, whoa, whoa, man. Whoa. Season five is when it's all going to happen. Just I was going to say. Just, we got to get those ratings back up. So season five, <laughs> season wait five. for it. You don't, you don't <laughs> have any out of plot. <laughs> 
Okay, so let me let me get this straight. Just, I, I, and I don't know how you do relationships. Yeah, I mean, I know you know you're engaged in the real world, but obviously you're not. So you've got a girl who's who's attractive based on Skyrim standards, who fights by your side no matter what. Saves my life uh, a lot, actually. Saves your life a, a heck of a lot. Um, isn't isn't bitchy? Isn't mean? Isn't cruel? Um, walks into traps dumb. for you. She squats when you squat. She oh, does. she's dumb. What? Is she dumb or is she just like self conscious because of all the misogyny? Are you a priest? That happens? You know. She always gets I, confused I'm when just... I heal her. Um, and then like, I don't know. You are a priest if you can heal. <laughs> But she she compliments you. Oh my God! What what a what a bitch! Get her out of town. Don't you dare get in my bed. I think you need to give Lydia a chance. I think you may God find damn it. Uh, they, I'm just saying. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to advocate anything. I think it's perfectly reasonable for a man and a woman to be friends. However, I feel like Lydia is trying to say to you, I feel for you in a very deep and special way. And um, you're shutting her out. And it, it, at least be honest with her and say, Look, Lydia, this is business. Give her the opportunity to find somebody else because what I think you're doing is you're keeping her around. So if you get rejected by the Khajiit woman that I'm sure you're looking after. <laughs> no, I've, I have stated Lydia my anti-cat people stance many times. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> yeah, Let's I, not even I, get on that. I said if I'm racist against anything in this universe, it's cat people. <laughs> I, I will make no bones about it. But I don't know. I, I just feel like now you're adding fuel to the fire, but. Chad is making conflict where there is none, and um, uh, the next... I mean, those, he makes some pretty good points. <laughs> just... It's just an interpersonal relationship, man. It's just those skills are things that maybe you're just lagging. Maybe you're so focused on dragon bones and making things out of dragon bones that you, you forget who, who really cares about you, <laughs> who's really by your side, who's going to be there in the end. It's not going like to be Lydia. No. You, I mean, do you want to marry the horse? Oh, shit. Wait a second. I think we see the, the issue here. I guess I'm going on with the old shadow mare, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's probably more like that. <laughs> when, when, when I get on the Skyrim and it's populated by horse people, I'm going to be like, fucking Justin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to give a uh, quick shout out to Nuclear Throne. Uh, played a little bit of that this weekend. That's early access, so I don't know what else you can really say about it. But it's from Vlambeer, the guys behind Ridiculous Fishing and Super Crate Box. Um, they seem to pump out you know a game every uh, four or five months uh, lately. But this is a uh, top-down shooter roguelike. Um, mm-hmm. Not twin stick. I don't know what to call. I don't know what you want to call the games where you're. You control the character with the keyboard, and then you you you're shooting with the mouse. Like it's always following the mouse cursor, kind of kind of a little bit like Hotline Miami was, but um, normal. No, but it's not Twin Stick. Like Twin Stick has a different. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. But has a Tw- bunch of Twin like, Stick is you know has a bunch yeah. of random characters. Great gun selection, which I think they kind of ported over from um, Super Crate Box. Uh, kind of post-apocalyptic setting, but just. Uh, you know, uh, lots of quick action and quick deaths and, and kind of one of those fun little ro- roguelikes to play in short bursts. So mm-hmm. it's twelve. So it's 12 bucks right now on early access, and they have already stated, like, in the, in the description, this game will be cheaper when it's we actually release it. So, um, which I, you know, they're calling that out, so take it at your own risk. I, uh, I like Flame Beer, so I wanted to check it out, but um, mm-hmm. I got... I think I played that for like 40 minutes, so you can check out all the characters on my live stream archive there. What does mm-hmm. it run right now? 10 bucks? 15? 12. 12.99. 12, 12, 12 yeah. okay. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it, I mean, they really know how to do the, uh, I don't want to call the game simple because simple is a bit pretty, pretty broad, but I mean, it's it just real tight mechanically mm-hmm. and just fun. And I, I, it's really cool to see, um, you know them succeed with that because I I really like Super Crate Box. Never played uh, the fishing game, but uh, Nuclear Throne was really a, a really tight experience actually. Even for it being pretty, um, still having some some yep. uh, some rough edges. Still, I I think it's gonna be really. That's gonna be like a like a Binding of Isaac. I I, I got yeah. a Binding of yeah, Isaac definitely. vibe from it, um, in terms of you know being able to follow that up and you. The, the ease of releasing DLC or whatnot for it, just little additions. So I'll be curious to see uh, how deep they get with it um because ridiculous fishing fishing um 
had a lot more depth than it kind of first came across, and it just seems like they've got the basics down already for this game, so there's yeah. got to be some more things going on under the hood like as you get to later levels. But I don't know. It's kind of like, for me... It's kind of like Spelunky that it was taking me forever to get to the second stage. So it, uh, yeah. cause I would just keep dying like on the first boss. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, it's, 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 it's a good time. So, yeah. Ethan, what you been playing? Um, well, I'm doing currently a, um, a live playthrough of Resident Evil Revelations, which is, I think, the only Resident Evil game I have not played, not counting the, you know, the light gun games. Um, and it it had a uh, it was released um, on PC and I think Xbox and PlayStation. It was originally 3. the 3DS game. It was originally a 3DS game, and the HD remake is what I have yep. was released. When was it released? It was not recently. It was last it's year like, sometime. Really? Or, or in the or in the spring or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to look that up. But uh, uh, but anyway, so I, I I didn't want to get a 3DS because I just don't want a handheld. You know. Uh, system i just I'm, i just no, that's not my thing maybe maybe down the road but right now that's not my thing um but i really wanted to play this game because it looked like they had made the resident evil game that people had been asking for but hadn't really been getting mm-hmm. um because as everyone knows you know right now there's kind of like three prongs to the resident evil attack you've got um you know operation raccoon city which kind of started shifting in a way way more action direction you've got uh, Resident Evil 6, where that just was like, yeah, fuck it. And then you've got Revelations, which is probably the truest to the Resident Evil formula um, outside of, you know, Resident Evil 4. You know, it's almost like you took Resident Evil 4 and you kind of went in a different direction. It's not perfect. It's still way, way more simplified than Resident Evil 4, but I, I've really enjoy, enjoyed it so far. Um, I've been What I've enjoyed most about it, though, is that they've, like, they've really stuck to their guns in terms of like a really corny storyline um as in like i kind of feel like they know it's a little bit corny i hope they know uh because if it did, because if they don't i don't know it did it look just, like it was embracing its silliness a little bit more yeah. than it was a little more lighthearted than even resident evil 6 like resident evil 6 yeah. still seemed to take itself a little bit seriously but i didn't get that impression from the brief part that i watched for yeah i was gonna say Six was was over the top and really thought people like bought into it. Whereas you know Revelations is just it's like ah, it's like it's like kind of like how Resident Evil One was. There's corny dialogue and what kind of stuff, but um, I've liked it so far. I've actually plowed through it, which I was surprised at because I was kind of like I'm not sure how it's going to translate because obviously you know we've got HD remakes and HD re-releases and whatnot. Sometimes they don't always carry over, um, and I don't have any experience with the Nintendo 3DS, so I don't know how that would function but if it plays like a, I, I would I mean it plays like a normal game that you play on PC or whatnot um, looks good I think it looks really good actually I was really surprised by how good it looked and um, it's got puzzles and it's got uh, actually it's got an element of exploration to it that I wasn't expecting so it's 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 a little bit deeper it's not as as um, linear of an experience as Resident Evil 6 was or even Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City for that matter so um, I was happy with it because again Resident Evil is in a really weird position right now it's basically make or break for that franchise uh, Resident Evil 7 has to come out and sell or it's done um, <laughs> and they have to go back to the drawing board because they can't come out with Resident Evil 6 uh, Resident Evil Revelations, while good, still needs something to bring in a bigger audience. Mm-hmm. And Raccoon City was, as far as I'm concerned, an experiment to branch five with six. You know, to, to start to introduce some mechanics that you're going to see there. So, um, I, playing this, it made me, you know, after playing six, I was like, okay, I could almost be done with Resident Evil. Playing this game made me realize why I liked it in the first place, and I hope that they can come back and do something with this series. I really do because it would be a shame if. If uh, even though I liked Resident Evil Six, it wasn't a good game. I, I liked it, but it wasn't a good game at all. I mean, I mean, you watch the watch the freaking stream of that. And it's like, God, you gotta be kidding me, you know? Um, it was torturous. There was there was moments that were torturous. This game has not been. It's been uh, pretty smooth going so far. So um, I recommend that if anybody's re- if anybody played Resident Evil Six and was really disappointed, um, and they don't have a 3DS and they want to kind of feel that Resident Evil vibe again, uh, pick this game up because it, it definitely, definitely was cool. Yeah. And it was on sale this weekend. So. I was going to say, I fucked up because I grabbed a couple Capcom games uh, during the sale this weekend, but did not grab this one for whatever reason. This one, I've actually wanted to play mm-hmm. this. Um, yeah. 
And uh, so I, I felt really dumb when I saw you were streaming. That's like, oh, shit. Like, I really didn't need to buy Bionic Commando Rearmed urgently. Like, there were other games in that in that list. So, um, yeah. T- but tell me tell me about um, some of the fashion decisions that they've made for Revelations. Well, and I'm going to – I don't want to be insulting when I say this. I think there's a particular group of people in the video game industry – um, who the debate right now about gender equality and all this kind of stuff, everyone knows it, and I'm not going to harp on either side of it. I think there's a very moderate view you can have on this. Um, but, I, but I think to be a modern game developer or publisher, you have to take into consideration that some people may have issues with how you uh, portray certain characters. Um, this game doesn't do that. In fact, it actually just makes characters look stupid as fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> like there's a few, like there's a few instances where the character is like overly sexualized. Uh, Jill Valentine just, it just, she has an outfit that doesn't make sense. All the male characters have like army fatigues on. They look well equipped and equipped. And Jill Valentine has like a like a little fucking cat suit on. And they're like, oh, maybe it's a scuba suit. It's not a scuba suit because she's not scuba diving. She's on a boat. Um, but there's this woman named Jessica who was introduced, and you're like, okay, this is Chris's other partner, and you know, let's see what's going on with her. And so the very next scene, you see Chris march and looking tough, just really equipped. They're in the mountains. It's snowing. This lady has high heels on and leggings. Okay, and I'm like, are you kidding me? And she's complaining about her feet the whole time. And I'm like, what are you <laughs> doing? Like, I don't, like, I don't, is this how you, I, I I don't know. I'm not going to read into it too much because that's all people do on the internet nowadays is reading sure. stuff too much. But but in those situations, you're just like, dude, just put her in some military fatigues. Give her some good boots. She's in, it's winter time. Her poor little toes are going to freeze off. And then the next scene, they get away from the, – they're, they're out of the mountain, and now they're, they're making their way towards the water where the boat is. And they're like, okay, finally, she's in a different outfit. Well, yeah, she is in a different outfit. It's, hey, again, a, a Jill-like – scuba suit but one of the legs is gone so she's so one leg is is you know you know has has a leather whatever scuba suit on the other is just her bare flesh and and i'm like (laughs) like there's one guy at capcom who either does not get resident evil or just is trying to burn resident evil down from the inside (laughs) he's just how funny would that be one leg at a time (laughs) i like oh yeah and there's another character that has like I mean, Leon Kennedy had some dumbass hair back in the day. This it's, dude makes Leon Kennedy look like a freaking like like supermodel. Like he's got, he looks like Conan O'Brien. He's got red hair that all, comes all the way down to here, parted on the. I, I'm like, is this what you? I mean, is this Capcom? Is this what you think white people look like? Like, is this what you think they look like? Because <laughs> no one looks like that. No one dresses like that. Like it was. It, uh, it's just really weird. It's all the other characters look gruff and good and whatnot. And I don't know. I don't get it. Somehow, like Barry Burton's biggest fan has infiltrated the Resident Evil team, and because they won't let him like make the game starring Barry Burton, he's sabotaging all the games. Well, I respect that. I, I respect the- that. But jeez, Louise, like that's a that's a crazy thing. But but yeah, no. But I, I mean, but I'm 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 being nitpicky about the game because the game could be really really good. Um, and I do realize it was released on a handheld, so there's a there's a different scope, I think, to handheld games. Which, but but that it being said, a lot of handheld games surprise me with the kind of scope they have um, compared to you know maybe even a generation ago or maybe even a few years ago. So um, this is cool, and I think it's this would have been a really great game to play on 3DS, but I, I I've loved it so far on yeah, uh, the PC. I'm really glad they ported it. It got good reviews on 3DS, and everyone was just kind of like, "Yeah, this is, this is a great game." I don't really know why this is a handheld game, but this is this is a great game. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yep. um, and maybe Absolutely. we just pretend Resident Evil Six doesn't exist, and this was like their um, side story. You know, it wouldn't be like, yeah because I prop it up as like the next big Resident Evil game, but no, like- no, no, no. I'm trying to remember the canon. I think this all happens in 2006. So this happens before, before Jill five. disappears, before 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that's what okay. happens. Yeah. Got to check back on it. Yeah. Uh, the Resident Evil canon, uh, I'm not on top of that like I should be. So. No one is. It's fine. Even Capcom. Yeah. <laughs> I've kind of forgotten about Capcom's it. not. <laughs> they're, they're, they're the least. That's the least of their concern. Canon? What? No. We don't need to worry about that. Cannons would be silly. Um, 
Yeah, that would. Yeah, I, well, maybe they would be silly. Because then that little guy in the back goes, "Wait a minute! Why don't we put a cannon in this game? Why don't we make it medieval Resident Evil? Why don't we just rah, zombie rah, cannon? Turn everybody into paint? Yeah, the oh, cannon yeah. has a virus. I'm gonna find this guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find him. I'm gonna punch him. No, I wouldn't punch him. That's not a nice thing to do. Um, just hug him until but that it's was, awkward. It, That's the best. Defense. Well, I, I'm really, really good at that. But uh, it was actually kind of good to get into Resident Evil because we've been playing Terraria in Minecraft, and I'm not going to go into too much on those because I talked about those last week, but like, I feel like I've been doing a lot of chores. I feel like I haven't really been playing games, and this has been a good transition back into like video games and getting back into it because I kind of had a, I, I had a bout of just, I was kind of like, oh, man, like I've built some cool stuff in Minecraft. I've done some cool stuff in Terraria, um, but I need to expand my horizons a little bit too, not just focus on those games alone because if I do... I get in this weird mood where, like, I have to accomplish all these tasks in <laughs> Minecraft and Terraria, and if I don't do those in a, in a you know certain amount of time, I'm I'm, I'm miserable for the day. So does, it, um, does that ever hit you, Jason? It sounds like, yeah, I would say that it's it like Ethan. It, it, you just kind of need something that's on rails. You just yeah. need something that is going to entertain yeah. you, that you can somewhat predict, but something that is just you not necessarily turn your brain off. But it's just it plays out for you. It plays out in front of you and everyone else. Like beyond and it's his just soul. really, really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know, there. It, yeah, I would have to agree with that. There, there are times where I'm playing Minecraft or even you know like Spelunky or Rogue Legacy, where it is a little open and you're just kind of like, I just kind of want something that has a story that's just gonna keep me entertained for a while i, mean, I think mm-hmm. it, i think it's important to have that trifecta you have your your open world your or creative game you have your i like that your on rails game that you don't really think about it too much it just goes and you have fun and then you need your short attention span game you need yeah mm-hmm. i think you get those three that's that's a good that's a good gaming diet and some mm-hmm. world of warcraft and animal crossing also <laughs> what <laughs> Oh no! Did it? It didn't get you, did it? Did the wow get oh, you? We haven't. No, we haven't played since. So. Okay. Oh. Well, I mean, you kind of. We, we, there's been like jokes about it, and we've all been a little bit like generally <laughs> concerned. We've just been a little bit concerned on it. So I don't. Not to the point where I'm checking your, uh, you know, Blizzard account to make sure that you know you haven't been on, uh, but enough to 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 make me kind of a little restless at night. You know. <laughs> Anything else, Ethan? Um, I'm. And this could kind of transition to maybe what I'm working on, but I, I played the game Knock Knock um, last week and have been playing it off and on. And I was hoping to get a review up this week and maybe even do a video on it, but I don't know how to review or make a video of that game. <laughs> that is nothing. I have nothing bad to say about that game. It is an experience. Um, a lot of people aren't gonna like it. They're just not gonna like it. They're not gonna get it. It's not gonna be their thing. To me, it's there's some elements of it that are that are pretty cool um some elements that i was really impressed with especially for it being you know it's it's a side scrolling it's supposed to be a horror game but um it's cartoony and stuff like that that being said it's still pretty creepy and there's a whole kind of mythology background to it i mean you really want to do your research on knock knock before you play it because it adds that much more to it because there's this whole story that you know the developers made the game and i believe it's ice pick is that right right Ice pick, ice I don't know. pick lodge, whatever. Um, I, I had it, but I didn't. I forgot. Um, who they got a myster- mysterious file from somebody, and they're all, you know, acting like this is real. Like they got a file that had all these, you know, uh, requirements for someone to make a game, and that you know they usually ignore this kind of stuff, but they actually took into consideration. So this game is built off the notes of some crazy dude. And so when you know that going into it and you play the game, it kind of fucks with your head a little bit. And that's why it's kind of a cool experience because you can see there's these rules that are playing out in the background that you have to kind of abide by to be successful in the game. And to be successful in the game, you have to survive a night um, by just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's so hard to explain. And I sat down, I've sat down and tried to write that review five or six times. And I'm just like, I'm like what do you say about it? Because... Mechanically, it's dull. Okay, <laughs> if it's just the mechanics, it's a it's kind of dull. But what the game does, it kind of evokes this this 
this kind of background sensation going on that makes you want to keep going to see what's really happening and it kind of throws in these little tidbits you know and if you don't pay attention and you're just into it kind of with a dull brain you're not going to get it and you're going to this is why some people aren't going to like this some people aren't going to have the attention span for it but for me i kept like i like wanted to dig more into it like man what's going on here like what's actually happening and the character has this really it's like kind of a cute cartoonish like character but he's going crazy like he's going nuts and talking about all this stuff that's going on and he's really disconnected from everything and it's just it's a it's a weird experience and i and what i just said means absolutely nothing but literally that's the best i can do to describe this game to anybody um if you want a unique experience if you don't mind a game not really being too gamey um i really think you'd like this i really think people would like this um at least to talk about it you know do you want me to just like cut that audio clip and send it off to like a transcribing service and they can write the review for you? <laughs> I, I mean, that's what I've been trying to say in my review. My, like I have those notes, but um, yeah, it's I, almost like they, it's almost like it can't be a review. Like I almost am not reviewing the game as much as I'm reviewing the idea behind it and what they're trying to do with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I know what they're trying to do with it. Um, game wise, I'm not going to sell people on it because I don't think it's a game for a lot of people. But for me, the storytelling and some of the elements to it, um, it's not to the like the fez extent where there's going to be a lot of people like doing all this background work to try to figure things out. But there's some there's some cool things going on in the background that, that a lot of people still don't understand. Cool. Um, and the game's been recently you know really or, you know released, but still I don't know it's, it's really interesting. I was interested in the game before you started talking about it, and now that you have successfully not described it, I'm still curious about the game. So I'll probably play it just to see what the hell you were not. Yeah, you talking should. About. Yeah, I mean that's that's like the best. It, it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it's there's there's many movies, many books that people are like, I just can't explain it to you, and that's curiosity, that's discovery, and that's what I want everybody to do. I'll become adventurers. Yeah. So what are what are you working on? What what do you got coming up on the site and stuff? Uh, uh, I mean the stream schedule. I'm trying to get to a point where I actually have my schedule written down. Um, and, I, and the weather is getting shitty now, so I mean that's going to be a lot easier. It's game time. Uh, but I, I, yeah, yeah, it's more it's more game time, and stuff is settling down. We're not going on vacation every other week now, uh, which is a nice thing. It's going to kind of nice to relax from there. But um, and then I, I, you know the montage uh, in, in reference to what you guys were talking about. You know you've got this Belunky montage, and then you know Jason was kind of talking about some montage type stuff. I've been I've got some videos that I was gonna try to make into Bertabius moments in gaming, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily fit it. They were kind of forced, and and I'm kind of like you know what, throw some music on there, and they actually work pretty well. Like that's what I was kind of messing with today a little bit. So I may release some kind of experimental videos, um, and not force myself into the Bertabius. Uh, corner because that needs a little bit more of a storyline than some games can can you know yeah i mean really like allow. um i forget how long it was but i still like i haven't figured out how quite how to do it but that far cry 3 video you made last year of just like mm -hmm. different ways to kill dudes and far cry 3 mm -hmm. which was yeah actually kind of novel in that first week like i don't know how necessarily how to cut those but those things i think they work really well if they're like you know two to five minutes two to four minutes um mm -hmm. um i think there's something more to be said than just our little our you know our 30 second highlights and our mm -hmm. 30 minute game curious videos which by the way um uh, it looked like you had some fun on your game curious video oh yeah yeah that was really fun and we've got that and you and i have been talking and i think we've got that system down i think i've got the system down more so now uh, i had a lot of fun with that and i want to do more of those game curious videos because they are pretty easy to turn around and and i think they're good i think that they're really good ways of getting an idea about a game um and just getting our just raw reaction to it because you know watching video game reviews on websites like they, they have a lot of time to formulate how they feel about it and and to me, it's almost better to watch someone play and then not know about the game at all and then them react because there's – they can't – I think there's a lot of like pseudo-intellectualism that goes into reviewing video games and sometimes that you're kind of like, yeah. okay, like, like, is it fun or is it not fucking fun? Like I don't, I don't, I don't care what sort of got, you know, uh, politics them, are behind it. You know? I kind of want them to read my words and, and, you know, and hear what I'm saying, but I also want them to kind of see my face. Like yeah, <laughs> there's a, there's a value to that that instant reaction and um, well it's uh, almost and always like those times where you're like oh like I like those like when I've watched yeah. 
I've watched a lot of yours, and you're kind of like, oh, that's a thing. Like, that happened. <laughs> and, like, all, it's all not funny. that you're upset about it, but it kind of, like, you know, like, kind of gets you for a minute. And, like, that, those are attention-grabby moments. Those are moments you can't, in, in reviews, it's really tough to write a review or even do a video review and to get those moments in there. So I think that that's why that's really cool. There was uh, So we'll do more of those. Whenever I think about our Game Curious videos, I put one up of, uh, oh, what was that, Starseed Pilgrim? And mm-hmm. uh, which is a really weird kind of you know abstract puzzle indie platformer thingy, and I just I posted it and like th- about six weeks later the the developer of the game reposted it and said check out this weird video of my game and it was just like huh I guess I didn't expect I didn't mean for that to come across as weird but when I'm just yeah. reacting to something like that yeah. uh, <laughs> well that's one of the dangers of of just sort of doing that is that you get possibly stuck in a game that you don't know how to play mm-hmm. and you're just kind of like I don't know what to do and then nobody in chat knows what to do so yeah. you're just kind of like do yeah, I but continue you're or, not the only, yeah. but that I, is part of it yeah you're not the only one that runs into that I think it's yeah. you know sometimes you don't then you offer just kind of feel like an idiot yeah I'm used to feeling like well, an idiot though that doesn't really yeah <laughs> it's a well, I used to I, <laughs> I used to kind of feel like an idiot with games like when I'm online and like I, I can't figure them out or whatnot. but like there's an aspect of like so if you've got a good tutorial system, you've got a good like if you've got good pre-instruction, that's a part of a review. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to have their hand held, and that's fine. But like when you play a game and it takes you half an hour to figure it out, um, there's certain games that are built for that. You know, your 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 dwarf fortress, your you know your your towns, those kind of games. But games that need to get going, I think that's why Game Curious works really well for those, because you sh- it shouldn't take you half an hour to like figure it out and to get things going. You should kind of know relatively quickly, and that's a good, that's, a, that's tough, again, to describe in reviews, because you forget that. Like, you, you play a 10-hour game, you get it done, you forget that moment where it was just really confusing sometimes. So, um, that's another good aspect of it, is it shows the games that really have some polish and it needs to be done as well. Um, and the funny weird shit that happens, too. Everyone <laughs> likes that. Uh, besides uh, maybe taking on some more single player games, any other things you want to call out, Jason, of what you're working on? Or are you good? You know, um, at work I've I've shifted some responsibilities, so I've just been trying to get used to that and just trying to get back into more. Um, I feel like I've live streamed more this month than any other time combined. <laughs> you know whether. And that might be like a test stream too. That could be on my private channel, just trying to iron, you know, settings out and stuff. I just found the setting that you can have uh, OBS record a video of your live stream locally oh, yeah. on your computer. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a nice I've been, feature. You know, ex- yeah, I've been experimenting with that just so that you know I can be sort of live streaming, but then edit it down and chop it together mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. some uh, playback later on I'll YouTube. Do- so. I'll have to give you our tricks too for pulling down our videos after the fact, but I well, tried yeah, to do a combination it, of it. Yeah, I, I you know I tried the whole upload to YouTube, then pull it down and stuff like that. It's just my uh, quality settings weren't set sure. high enough. Yep. So now I I think I've got it down now cool. to the point where um, I think it might work out because I have a pretty good upload here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I'm just gonna push it to the to the max and see what the quality looks push like. Push it to the max. Go from there. Because I'm actually working with just the onboard video on my computer right now, so it is doing a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. So once I throw a video card on there, it's going to be pretty out. nice. Yeah, it's going to be pretty nice. So yeah, I'm just getting in, you know getting into the live streaming. I'm streaming on the uh, this channel tomorrow night mm-hmm. on something that is like the lowest graphic bit ever, but it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> I look yeah, forward to it. So. Yeah, um, it should be a good time. And then possibly Minecraft if things go south on that really quick. <laughs> I I, I, Oregon I Trail is something that could go really bad really quick. Yeah, good luck with the audio levels in that game. That would be the... Yeah, I think I got them ironed out in my LP from before. So I'm going to do... Again, there's a reason why you want to do some test streams before you jump onto an actual yeah. channel. Mm-hmm. Because that helps. Oh, I'm our chat audience loves our, our volume checks. It's fine. <laughs> that's what i always do yeah <laughs> so most of my attention has been on getting the charity marathon ready to go we announced that today uh, officially on the mm-hmm. site i kind of teased it on a previous podcast but that will be november 2nd uh 24 hours we'll be streaming on our twitch channel and raising money for child's play on actgamers.org and uh in addition to our normal charity marathon where you'll have five six 
five or six of us plus random guests playing games all day. Uh, we've also going we're going to be having a game jam going on at the same time, and so we'll be checking in with their game development proce- process. Um, uh, you might remember Street Alchemist uh, Alex from our site from a while back. He'll be he'll be working on that uh, as with. Uh, Jordan from our community along with some other developers so um, there's I've seen some of the initial ideas they're kind of cool it'll be a fun way to break it up and and also uh, tap into some indie game development there so we're excited about that um, please check us out and um, I'll keep you posted we're going to start taking donations uh, prior to the marathon and I'll get that information out as soon as that is ready to go um, yeah and then this week, uh, you're also going to see the return of our Reply to All series. I think about every other week or so, we're going to have a, a, conversa- a, a offline conversation with some of the um, some of the members of Horde Might you don't always hear from, the guys not on our podcast, and get them back in the mix and just part of our uh, so or weekly conversation. So I'm excited about bringing that back. And then um, as far as live streams go... Like I said, I'm going to be focused on single-player games, trying to knock out some of my lists before we get to the end of the year here. Um, And as part of that, um, I'm going to check out The Wolf Among Us uh, this Thursday. And um, I'm really looking forward to checking out that game. It's gotten gotten some some good reviews, some interesting reviews, um, in addition to my Tomb Raider run. So um, we'll try to mix in the multiplayer when we can, but it's kind of like... I've kind of got my head down, focused on knocking out what what we can do, and um, before the before the end of the year, because as soon as we get past this charity marathon, it's it's grimy time. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, new releases are kind of light this week, so we'll breeze right on through this. But because we're basically at the point where I'm looking through this list, and the biggest release of the, the week to me are the new Star Wars tables for Pinball FX2. I might be a little biased. <laughs> um, but, Fucking Pinball. Yeah. Um, let's see. I've seen a lot of ads for Tetrabot and Company on PC. Um, I don't think there's anything else here to talk about. Do you guys know anything about Democracy 3? It's the third one of those games. It's 25 bucks. No? It's it got a It doesn't cult work. Following. It's, it's shut down, okay. so... It's shut down. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> got you. Democ- <laughs> democracy. Th- oh, I got you. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, I, I, no, oh. I see stuff about the other ones. Oh, um, what? Xbox, Xbox fans, Connect fans, Connect Star Wars is on Games on Demand this at this as of this week. Mm. So oh, good. You can get your Star Wars dancing on. Really, uh, who yeah. wants, who wants to be be a millionaire is on Xbox Live Arcade. Did they bring that show back? Did I miss that? I don't know. Is it still in syndication? I don't. I don't, I don't know. With um, Meredith or whatever. Ooh. Oh, demo demo for Lego Marvel superheroes. I got excited for that. Um, some more PSN downloads. Cabela's African Adventures. Yeah, boy. Yeah, I, I want a new hunting game. I need a new hunting game, man. Those games are kind of fun. Know, Just go back to your Hunting Unlimited 2010 or whatever whatever that game yeah, was. Yeah, I know, but I, 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 saw, I saw a couple of the Cabela games, and they look pretty tight. They look a lot of realistic uh, things going on. Realistic animals running from you. Realistic uh, a buck pee. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Hmm. Hold on. I'm seeing... Um... Does it include the uh, same like bad expectations when you go to like a Dave and Buster's? <laughs> that's the only time I ever played those. This could, yeah, I was, was going to say yeah, that or truck stops. Yeah. This could be wrong, but uh, Shaq is saying Mighty Switch Force 2 on the eShop on Wii U. That is a, that is a solid downloadable, uh, at least the first one was a solid downloadable title. Uh, that's from uh, Way Forward. So, um, yeah, that is... Woo! Come on, November. Get here. Well, there, what's there's something at the end of October. Is that well? Games will start coming out soon. Whatever. I'm not gonna figure that out. Let's talk about better yeah, games. Yeah, games that so don't many. exist. Yeah. Oh yeah, we should talk about that. Um. Let's make a let's make a game about roasts. No, I'm not gonna start off with that. Jason, you 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 actually think through these. Ethan and I kind of do this on the fly. I feel like. Um. 
Um, I write mine as quickly as you come up with yours. Okay. But yeah. I do seem to always try to put know, something your, novel behind yours it. Yours is usually like a complete thought. So let's see where we go with your game pitch. Okay, so this is what I... I don't know what I was... I was randomly thinking... I think it's because I watched PBS, so you can blame PBS if this is a bad idea. But I was thinking about the Underground Railroad. But... But... <laughs> It's, I'm always thinking about that. That's okay. Yeah, I know. Railroad, it's just, but... it's just, it's always, it's always <laughs> in there. So, I, for some reason, I was thinking about an angel in like demons game, but okay. instead of like fighting each other, it's a game where you play an angel trying to save and smuggle souls uh, out of hell. Hmm. Does that make sense? You sure you weren't watching I, Supernatural? I mean. I mean, biblically, biblically, you know, I don't know. I mean, those those souls are in hell right. for a reason, Jason. I know, and that's exactly what I was like. It was a mistake, Ethan. Like, ah. It was a. <laughs> there was, well, that's what, I'm testing Jason. He just was like, yeah, I know. No. What no. if they got stolen from heaven in the first place? Well, that's what I'm. Yeah, exactly. So no, there that's what I was thinking because I was like, biblically, yeah, this doesn't make much <laughs> sense. But you know, you could maybe bend bend the the truth. Uh, actually, more really. more than likely, your angel somehow beat the odds and he's probably an asshole and he is, he's just trying to get his his bros out that are assholes. Assholes well, there you go. asshole savior. You got your title. What if what if what if you're an angel that you know, yeah, you kind on the murky side of the law uh, of heaven's law and you're be, you kind of get paid in angel bucks to uh an smuggle people out. So it's kind of like a like a moral divide there. I actually so like So not angel dust, angel <laughs> bucks. <laughs> Angel, well, oh, there you go. Maybe you're not even an angel. You're just a guy that's high on angel dust. I was gonna say the angel dust stuff's not gonna get past the Australian rating ratings. Board. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe your your character is just high on angel dust, and this is them tripping. <laughs> I like that ending. I like that ending. He's actually just kidnapping children, and he's like doing this really I mean, horrible thing. If you think about Stop it, there's... taking the angel dust. You know, there's so many games and show and, and TV shows that end with the. A character just like waking up and it was all a dream. Like, yeah, yeah. Why can't it just be a bad drug trip? Let's yeah. be, let's get that's that's more realistic, right? Yeah. Well, it teaches kids a lesson too. Um, or actually, adults as well. I was I was I like the image in my head of like this stealth game in hell, like as far right. as this angel sneaking around with all this ridiculous. You know, did you hear you guys play Dante's and Dante's Inferno? So it has some yeah. of like yeah some of the best hellish Im- imagery. The rest of the game is fucking terrible, but the imagery in it yeah. is pretty pretty right. wild. But just like you know, it's it's chaotic, it's loud, it's it's disturbing. Yet you're having to sneak around in it. Like that could be um, that could be handled either really really well comedically, just from it just kind of being ridiculous, or just like you're really getting into the grime there and just like you know sneaking. Well, through. I would terrible situations. I would imagine you would yeah I'd imagine you kind of stand out too so coming up with ways of sort of blending in so that you can help these uh, souls get to their destination I was this is strange but I was almost thinking like splinter cell and hell does that well it, yeah then you have an option of do you go out in your pure stealth because the new splinter cell game I remember they described it as you could take the ghost uh, kind of the ghost process the the panther process and oh, yeah. some other animal that kills everything and so you could either kill everything sneak past or kind of do a combination of both that would be actually pretty cool yeah. i think i think you're could you use disguises i would imagine they don't, so. do, they don't do disguises enough in games they really don't they do you know kind of subtle ones but yeah i think disguises would be really good i think your character is allowed a certain number of sins before you have to be cleansed, like to to be to blend in, like your camouflage is, you have to actually commit a sin or commit a horrible act, and then oh. by the time you get through this, are you still an angel, or are you just stuck in hell because now you belong here? There's a balancing act. That's actually really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Write that down. But but everyone, game, I'll just record it. The game, it. Doesn't, the game oh. doesn't actually <laughs> tell you until the end if you are accepted back into heaven. Oh, that'd be fucked oh. up. Kind of like Dishonored, man. I, I kind of like how Dishonored kind of like a moral. You kind of knew you were doing something bad, but you it didn't. It kind of and it kind of kept track of it a little bit, but you didn't yeah. know exactly how that was going to affect things. That could be really pretty bad. The end of the game actually. is just an image of God, and he says, "Who the fuck are you?" And that's it. Yeah, what'd you do? 
What'd you do? You're an angel. What'd you do? I don't know why God sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a nagging, like, 75-year-old man. But, it, yeah, it just seems like this could go in a lot of different directions, and that was just, it, that's, that was the genesis of the idea, and then it kind of just went from there. Huh. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I would I, play that game. I want to play a stealth game where you, yeah, you, tr- you oh, sneak through. Oh, and then the, then the, you know, unicorns attack. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> It's all about, prequel yeah. to the Unicorn Sticker game. <laughs> um, Ethan, I want you to help me out with mine because uh, I was thinking about this. We were, I had a little, uh, we had an offline conversation, and uh, I was reminded of uh, some of my controlling tendencies uh, with uh, <laughs> running a goddamn website. And Pretty, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I want a game that can help me with um, my control issues, and I don't really know. There already is. Okay. There's already a game like that. What is that? It, it, a game that you just need to be exposed to to a game of of, of pure chaos, pure uh, lack of uh, direction. Uh, you just go play Terraria, <laughs> go play Minecraft. That's all you. Maybe that's, that I mean, for a game it. to help that. <laughs> you, I mean, I mean it, it's. I thought about streaming that, that, that the other day, and like it would literally be 15 minutes of me just standing completely still. <laughs> completely paralyzed. I just don't know what it. to do. Oh man. Uh, um Maybe it's it's a Terraria it's tutorial kinda, game. <laughs> Walking me through it so I can let go. Well it's kinda interesting because you do have those games like I I mean it, what comes to mind towns is a game that has a mechanic where you're not you don't have direct control over your town's people. You're kind of assigning them jobs and based on how they feel they may not get those jobs done. Um Exactly like you want. Uh, now there's been some alterations made so that you can actually direct them more specifically. But kind of like some of these God games, I think even a uh, uh, black and white was a bit like that. Whereas you didn't again, you weren't directly controlling the people. You were influencing the people, and and that, those kind of games I think are cool. What if it was like a what if it was black or white, black and white? But I have to play as one of the citizens, and just I just like mindlessly have to follow, like. And, and trust in somebody else rather than trying to control the situation. Because I feel like playing a game with a god 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 mode in, would increase my god complex, and that could be a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so you just do everything the game tells you to, and if you don't, you lose. Yeah, kind of like Beyond Two Souls. Oh wait, let's <laughs> <laughs> throw that in. There. Yeah, you just quick time event after quick time event. That's what it would be. Rush your t- Go to it. bed. That's exactly what bad. it would be. It would be. Yeah, it would it? Yeah, yeah. To, yeah, if you have a control freak in your life, you have to, like part of my therapy would be to play through these all the worst quick time event games. A quick time roguelike. Oh Jesus! <laughs> that is the game. That that would be the game. Yeah. That would be like the trial by fire game where the quick time events change all the time. They're really frustrating, um, and you it's it, it's like a twenty hour long game. That could end at any moment with just one bad quick time event. But it's like, kind of like the fight in Resident Evil Four between Leon and uh, Krauser, where if one fucking wrong move and you lose, yeah, that's the game for you. And then the actual ending to the game is like it does some sort of test, or maybe it's like I don't know if the Kinect camera could do this, but it basically has to like judge my face and my reaction to the ending to make sure that. Even though it didn't go the way I wanted it to, that's okay. Like I have to, I have to like accept the ending. <laughs> so, so, so maybe it measures how tightly your butthole is pushed. Yeah. Right <laughs> it's a new sensor. Yeah, it's mm. like please, please insert, <laughs> connect into butthole. Yeah, no, that that could be a good that could be good for people because uh, I like yeah because I feel like I need the opposite game. I feel like I need a game that like makes me have direction. <laughs> you know. So no, that that could be a good game. It would be a horrifying game for a lot of people, but yeah, for a treatment option, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Ethan, take us home. I actually have a, a somewhat serious idea. You know, I, I'm a huge fan of FTL, huge hand, fan of the, the the movie Pacific Rim, and I just think about uh, kind of a, a tra- you know taking the idea of FTL and actually instead of it being you know mm-hmm. ships against ships, it's actually robots against giant monsters and. Um, having the same kind of mechanics of, you know, you have your offense and defense. You can all, also, like, 
I, I, the, the scene I kept seeing is, you know, in FTL, you can actually send your uh, your guys over to the other side to the other ship, so they can kind of do damage on the inside, so you can have a boarding team and whatnot. And I imagine the same thing could happen with these giant mechs and giant uh, giant uh, monsters, but you're actually inside their bodies, like so you're you're taking their heart out, you're taking their brain out, and it causes all these different things to happen. Um, and so Edge is almost like a reskin of FTL. So I mean, pretty simple. But I just I think it, it would lend itself to kind of kind of a cool game that you know because I think there's so much you can do with FTL. I mean, you can add new ships and that kind of stuff. But maybe like a new setting. Yeah, and see what other settings stuff. would work. Like yeah, like just in big cities. Like you know, instead of you moving from uh, galaxy to galaxy, you move from city to city, and you know you may land on a big monster. You may you know have, have people you know, help you rebuild your suit. Um, uh, and just, you know, because cause I, I, in, in FTL I always thought, you know, it'd be cool if you at one point fought like a big alien creature that was just floating there and you're fighting it. Because I always like that dynamic of, of me as something robotic versus something alien or, you know, monstrous or hellish or whatnot. And, um, and like in FTL, I mean, I think it would really lend itself well to that. And I imagine like, you know, getting, you know, your, your, your robot's head. I mean, I just – in the movie in, in, in Pacific Rim, just when those robots, they, they could keep fighting if – one of their limbs went down, but like, if you know one of the pilots was killed or something, it would just cut their functionality in half and just kind of deal with those kind of situations. And that, it, I mean, translates quite well to FTL, where you can you you know you can totally handicap um, a ship or whatnot just by hitting a certain system and and just timing it and, and and being intelligent with how you do things. Do you think it would work with like only having a couple pilots, or would you have to expand the game to have like you know? room for a bigger crew yeah yeah i would almost be like i would almost feel like you'd have to have room for a bigger crew and you would almost instead of having the top down you would have like like front ways and you could see them climbing up and down the legs and stuff like that you could actually do something like on multiple fronts because the you know the uh the the mechs and pacific rim are connected to basically some uh, control hub back at the base but the Mm -hmm. giant monsters could be attacking that base so you're you managing like two locations and multiple mm. multiple mechs yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of cr- like i feel like that would just elevate the ftl concept up to either something awesome or completely unplayable yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but i think i just think it'd be cool i just think that what you know ftl was one of the most perfect roguelike games i think like in my mind it, actually it as far as i'm concerned it's it's between it and Dungeons of Dreadmore, I don't, I don't, I don't know which one. I, I probably prefer FTL, but it just, it just, it's really well. It's, it's simple, but it's, you know, to the point. I think I love mechs. I love giant monsters. Fucking throw them in there, you know. I like graham crackers. I like marshmallows. I like chocolate. Make me damn s'more. Make me an <laughs> FTL s'more with monsters and robots. I want monsters and robots. Is there any other? Where else can we do with monsters and robots? So that, that wouldn't be the first thing I go with, but. Any oh answers? man, there's oh the sky's the limit. Why, I mean, why aren't we doing, um, why aren't we doing like a big? I want cons- a pu- like, I want actually I want Pacific Run like Punch Out colon Pacific Rim. Well, did you see the? I mean, there's a Pacific Rim game that came out that doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah. But it was made by the same dudes that do. They did. They did, they did the Rock'em Sock'em Robots game. Whatever yeah. that. Whatever that movie was called. Oh okay okay. Um, it could be way better. I just it could be way better. Um, that game just did not look good at all. I like how they they created it so that it's more strategic. Like you're not just punching and just going to town. But I want a big destructible city as well. I want to be swinging shit into like kind of like King of the Monsters. Uh, there was actually a Godzilla game that came out for the I want to say the Dreamcast or the Saturn that I don't think was good, but it, like the possibilities were kind of cool. Um, well, but there's... then. There's going to be another Godzilla game. Yeah, but I want a good game. Movie. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, or I want to be the monster, and I want to be messing the city up, and then so having like, robots come after me. So, kind of like Rampage. Rampage. What was that? Man, there was another game yeah. I played that uh, was pretty awesome. It was for PlayStation. It was a I know what you're talking about. I forget the name of it. It's like man, killing it was, all the monsters or something. Yeah, it was cool. Monster World. 
Yeah, it, they. Yeah, it was some. I don't know what it was, but you build your own monsters, and you, cr- you know, you have all these mission objectives in these cities and that kind of stuff. And I just like smashing cities, man. I don't like to be the bad guy, but when I'm a monster, like it doesn't matter because humans aren't the same species as me, so yeah. I can smash them. I don't and care. you can always get away with that by saying this isn't Earth. It's not us. It's fine. Like, oh, I want it to be Earth. Yeah. Oh, you want to destroy Earth? You've gone it evil. Feels better, you, Ethan Moses. Well, no, as a You're monster, a terrible I man. can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get out of here by spouting random things from chat, uh, like Tom Clancy's Splinter Hell, uh, What If the Angel Was a Robot, uh, Armored Core Type Co-op versus Aliens, Matrix Final Stand Fight, uh, and Krug Dog, <laughs> Dark, I Want Dark Souls and Borderlands to Have a Baby. So I just want, we'll leave you mm. with those thoughts in your head, but... That's it for the Night Force Action Report tonight. Gentlemen, thanks for hanging out. Thank you. Thank you. Chat, thanks for uh, hanging out as well, and we'll see you again next week.